Hi Pisces, thank you for joining me and welcome to my channel. This is your reading for Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising. I'm Varush and this is uh, your weekly reading. I don't do these readings every week, but this week we have a lot of astrological transits that are important for us to know, so I really want to emphasize for that for you. I talked about the transits that I'm going to talk about today in other parts of the video, um, in other videos. Those are linked in the corner and in your Pisces playlist including other videos there as well. So I keep the Pisces playlist updated with videos that are relevant to now. So it might be a good place for you to start in terms of looking at information. So let's first take a look at the Lenormand and see what's up. We have the snake. Okay. I filmed this for you guys yesterday without the sound. It was very, very brutal when I real. it was on YouTube and I checked it finally. And, um, it was just, I was like, no, <laughs> I can't believe that. Chastity, we have the sun in the center. So this is my second time through with your frequency. Uh, we have the hand. Very much protection oriented. And we have the fox. Okay. Um, so I sense that you have a lot of wisdom. You had been involved in a situation with someone who was duplicitous, was not nice, snake energy you know um and i don't think snakes are bad but i think you know symbolically and and in the lenormand they do represent like a person who's manipulative and aggressive narcissistic that kind of thing and i see you as very like chaste these cards have extra cards because this is my deck i know it's an out of print deck and i'm thinking of reprinting it but um, but chastity, so chastity is just, you were good. Like you were, <laughs> you were like, um, you know, you didn't go against yourself. You were honest. You dealt with the situation fairly. It's, it, you rose to the challenge. And at the center of this is a great happiness that you have and a big joy. It's a good time in your life. And now moving forward, I feel like I feel like you've separated yourself from someone, Pisces, the snake, and they're far away. So it looks like they're they're far away from you now in one way or another. So you've done a good job protecting yourself and just making sure uh, like you're okay. And you're the fox actually in this situation, looking back at the snake and saying, oh, you know, these are all the things that I did to like, like protect myself. So today's reading happens because this week's transits are really crazy. And because we have certain limits that we can sort of fulfill on YouTube in terms of how many videos we upload, some of our videos are going up later. So it's the 13th uh, today, but I'm going to talk about transits that happened on the 11th and the 12th as well. Just look back on those dates here. You didn't miss anything. Everything's good. And I've, I've planned... The signs that are most impacted by those transits already received their videos. So you're good. Um, so let's talk about the major, there's three major transits to be aware of. So this energy is a energy in which you're, you need to be very like self-aware. And when you understand the energy, then you'll be able to react well. And when you react well, then you're going to have the outcome you want. So it's very strategic sort of reading today. I hope it helps. And just take it as suggestions. Anything I say, as anyone says, you should take as suggestions, obviously. So the big kind of, I think the biggest transit of the week is the North Node with Aldebaran right here in your fourth house of home and family. And so the North Node with Aldebaran is something I've spoken about a lot. The reason for this is that there's two nodes. There's a mean node and a true node. And so the true node represents the exact position that the north node is in. The mean node represents an average. And so uh, regularly I use mean, but uh, for this purpose, it's the true node. The conjunction with the true node happens on the 15th of July. Awareness is brought in, self-awareness, awareness of where you stand. And for you, that awareness really resonates in the home. Now, your uh, transit is closest to the IC line. 
and when because it's closest to the IC line, it's the it's one of the most personal ones. What do you truly want to be? Who do you want to be? Why do you want to be that way? What in your family brought that up in you? Um, these are kind of very um, pressure filled energies, like things that are insistent. And I think that if you don't follow through Pisces with the whatever comes through as your point of awareness, there's a really big chance you'll be unhappy. So I can't encourage you enough more to get in touch with your heart and really feel this energy so that you fulfill what your base desires, your, your base needs. So it's a very beautiful thing. It's really oriented towards home and family. So look to the things that are close to you for inspiration on that. So far, this reading's going much better than yesterday. So uh, there's also a sextile to Chiron in your second house. Uh, Chiron in the second house overall, uh, anxieties around money. And I know Pisces are going through this like, um, not fear of money. Uh, I know some Pisces that are very good with money, but um, but what I would say is many Pisces are struggling with the concept of money and so forth at this time because Chiron's in and it's closely tied to who you are. Like you don't want to be that person that goes after the bag. You want to have more meaning in your life. and But then the consequence of that is that maybe you know, you have financial needs that are harder to meet because you don't go after those things. That's just an example. I know some corporate Pisces, you know, <laughs> sharks, <laughs> and they're amazing at it. So I'm not saying you can't be, but the Chiron uh, direct transit in your second house makes many of you feel self-conscious about material things. And, and frankly, most Pisces do have challenges with the material because you're non-temporal like you understand the non-temporal space so much that like superficial decisions are sort of problematic for you that's not the point so if you're dealing with pressure in the second house with money like you you, you maybe you have anxiety towards money or something like that that's going to alleviate because on Wednesday, the 15th of July, Chiron goes retrograde in your second house. That's awesome. And so then that is going to create a sextile to the north node. And, and that sextile is very powerful. So what happens when Chiron goes retrograde? All those money, problem, concerns, self-conscious things go down a little bit. So you feel less less like that. And so in a sextile to the north node, what happens? You feel more empowered and more able to go after the things you want, to take the steps in the direction you need. So it's a really beautiful, I can't stress this enough for you Pisces. There's a bigger transit that affects you directly at this time, the water grand trine. I'll talk about that at, at the end. But the point is that this is the most important one for you because it's like, you have a window of opportunity to really go after what you want and I think you should. And I think <laughs> and you know, I don't I don't try to influence people's um karma. I'm the captain after all, but I'm not necessarily the director. <laughs> but here I have to, like as a good friend, tell you that's what I think you should do. While you feel more confident about yourself in the material plane and make some decisions about who you wanna be at and who we are at home is who we truly are most often right so this is closely tied to your expression of your true self what do you want your life to be like fulfill that go after it and the high point of that energy that lasts all month is july 15th so the energy lasts with us from june till the end of july but the the exact conjunction is on the 15th so pay attention it's already happening so you should already be feeling these frequencies and if you haven't been using them use them Okay, so um, second point. Uh, this is very well talked about. Your your chat, your video name is actually from that. So it's, the video is called A Partner Emerges. And it's actually because of this transit. I'm not sick. I have a little <coughs> hripka. It happens to me all the time. Um, so anyway, so, um, uh, so if I have a little sugar, I get it. I'm not very good with sugar. I know it sounds funny. Other people talk about like weed and like <laughs> drugs and like alcohol. I'm like, I can't have sugar. It's too much for me. <laughs> okay. So, so anyway, that's the secret. 
anyway, um, so so um, we have uh, Venus and Mars it conjoining um, on the Tuesday, on uh, today, the day of filming, in Leo in your sixth house. What's going to happen right after is that they're going to enter into Virgo. What happened before, and this is the part where you you missed the precursor energy. What I talked about in other videos, but I I didn't get your video out in time. Um, basically, uh, on the 11th and on the early, early and 12th, the moon was with this position. So even though Venus and Mars form exact conjunction on the 13th, I feel like yesterday's energy, the 12th, was much more expansive in terms of the heart uh, because the moon was with Venus and Mars here in your uh, in your sixth house. So at that time, during that conjunction, look back on, on Monday, what, what kind of interactions you had, like where was your life fulfilled, where did you feel fulfilled? And so the moon moves into Virgo on Tuesday this morning, and, and then Venus will follow into Virgo at the end of the month, of, and Mars will follow at the end of the mar month as well. And so um, this is where your partner's emerging. So you may not see this emergence happen this week, but powerful things are happening. And especially in the sixth house, this is like, you know, you go to a coffee shop or wherever you're at on a daily basis, things show up for you, opportunities show up for you, connections with others. And so look for the kinetic energy look for the energy connecting itself to other energies and frequencies because within a couple weeks something's happening in your partnership area of the house and something's emerging now if you're in a couple something's going on between you and partner of an improving nature and that connection will improve into the following weeks so use that wisely this is a time for you to spoil each other to show each other love and caring and i think that will be very nice for you so and if you're single put yourself out there you know um connect with people call up the guy that you like or the girl that you like who you've never had the nerve to talk to maybe this is the time to let things begin so that's that's the that's this transit this this energy i've been telling everyone so i'll tell you too culminates here in April 2022 with two conjunctions in Capricorn and in in Aquarius. But we'll talk about that separate. For you, pay attention to the next couple of weeks. That's really the interesting part in terms of love. The third transit is your transit. And it's this big set of grand water trines. So they're, they're trines at first. Um, on Monday, again, looking back a little bit, sorry, we had the conjunction begin between Jupiter and Mercury. I love this conjunction. It's like two magicians playing together, you know, like, and so here, let me bring the chart up so you can see it a little better. So we have Mercury and Jupiter uh, forming their trine. The trine continues through the rest of the week. So, uh, so enjoy this frequency. And because Jupiter is on your cusp, Anything that you say, anything that you initiate will be of a positive nature, a, a successful nature. Further to this, when Mercury enters into Cancer, in, it was, has now entered into Cancer on the 11th, but now that it's in your fifth house, so essentially having fun, if you go out and you go have fun, those are magical moments for you right now. So be careful or be conscious of the, the space that you're in, where you're putting in energy, because you can manifest things. So like if you go to like, I don't know what's fun, like a public pool, I haven't been swimming in a long time because of the panorama, or like uh, some park or whatever, and you just fully fa uh, fall into the moment of having fun and enjoying yourself, magic happens, so do it. Just put yourself in a good mood and go out there. Awesome. And so if you can, some places are still in lockdown. The second trine happens between the sun and Neptune as the sun approaches Neptune. That happens this weekend. It really is exact on the 15th as well. That's the same date that the north node forms the exact conjunction with Aldebaran and Chiron for, goes retrograde. So it's like in terms of timing, when well, Thursday, sorry, Thursday the 15th. I thought it was Wednesday. Um, so anyway, so that's better yet. So... Thursday, Jupiter's Day, we have this beautiful frequency of less stress, focus, and then the Sun and Neptune in a trine 
And Sun and Neptune in a trine is like openness to the possibilities. Again, fifth house Sun, you're having fun. And then first house Neptune, you know, expansion and the possibility. You, Neptune in the first house really allows you to take on other possibilities into your reality. So there's this, there's just more coming in, more opportunity coming in. And so, and so great beautiful beautiful transit then we have the moon will enter will transit between leo through scorpio this week so i'll tell you right now which uh houses it's in it'll be in leo until tuesday morning so now it's gone then virgo until the 15th in the morning and then it enters libra for a few days and then on the 17th, the moon moves into Scorpio, and this is where we're focusing on. The 17th is Saturday, so Saturday and Sunday, the moon will be running through Scorpio, and as it does, it completes grand trines with first the J Jupiter and uh, Mercury uh, connection, and that will be most powerful for those of you who have transits in early Pisces, and then later on in Sun and Neptune, which is... The, most powerful for those of you who have 18 degrees to 28 degrees Pisces transits and these are called grand trines they're activator energy for love it, it activates your fifth house ninth house and first house an openness to the world a, a willingness to try different things that you normally wouldn't try uh, putting yourself out there having fun so put yourself in the spirit of fun and it kind of brings you this protection it brings you this positive energy so um, out of the water signs because I did y'all together because of this grand trine you're not necessarily the one with the strongest well you're pretty strong because you have both of your rulers activating it so I think that it's meaningful and I think that your transits are very heart centered. So I hope the rest of the week is like full of love and, and good frequencies for you in that way. Um, there's a couple transits that are less positive that you may want to be aware of, but some of you guys don't want to listen to that. If you are, if you don't want to listen, then please jump to the tarot. Um, and I'm going to talk about it now. So on Sunday we have, um, Lilith entering into Gemini and this is again that same position between your IC between your third and fourth house so be very wary of triggering comments being made that hit very close to home for you with regard to childhood or uh, stresses that you or traumas that you experienced in ch childhood you could experience with this transit of Lilith in the fourth house increased amount of uh, just things coming up that are triggering for you, especially to do with things that you went through as a child. So be wary of that. Um, I'm, I've made some comments about Lilith. That's probably enough. But for you, if you just stay wary, like let's say, you know, if you, if you, if you have some trigger from early childhood, stay away from sources or environments in which those types of triggers come up just be more careful with it with this transit you'll be fine but there's another transit that's really powerful this week that's coming up on saturday and it involves cancer so it involves a water sign which is important for you to be aware of and that is the opposition between pluto and uh, your sun um, and for you it's between the fifth and the eleventh house so it could literally mean a friend who's overbearing you could be dealing with a friend who's who's overbearing in some way and the sun comes through and there's a confrontation about it so if there's in your friend group someone who's just really over the top the sun from you will confront it like especially if somebody's trying to impose on you like how to live your life or if you're if you hang out with your friends and this person always like forces the issue that this is how the session's going to be, this is how you guys are going to spend time. There could be a big pushback from you with regard to that. So again, be wary of how you do that because it'll come with a lot of force and maybe you don't want to be that intense because the sun opposite Pluto is a big 
fact check. And so maybe it's not that situation, but anything to do with friends that's disempowering, something within you will like, this is your solar plexus, right? In the fifth house. So something within you is going to have a lot of force. Solar plexus is pure ego. And so you're going to have some kind of a reaction to that. So make sure if it's very triggering and you don't want a reaction, then be careful. But if you want to finalize something, push forward something, or really kind of stand up for something, this is the time to have this powerful moment. I have this dice with the houses, so I'm rolling it for people just to see which house is impacted or which house to pay, pay attention to. You guys have the ninth house. So there's no, tr oh, there's the Scorpio moon. So like, like I assumed. Um, so Again, when the moon enters into Scorpio on the 17th, it'll form these grand trines to the uh, these other placements, and that will activate very big heart-centered energy. But remember, at that same time, we have Sun opposite Pluto, and then we have Lilith entering into Gemini. So if there are hang-ups or if there are difficult things that you're struggling with, uh, be wary so that you don't act in such a way that how do you say the more pressure we feel about something the more we can react and ultimately that might not be the the way we want to behave right so if that's your situation then be wary but if you want to free yourself from something if something's if a friend's really making you mad or annoyed then that's the time to like let them know and put them in check okay but remember with Lilith you're dealing with a lot of triggers that are oncoming that have to do with your early childhood which in some ways is like the most vulnerable spot right so so just be wary that you're not, re re respond, not react. That's probably the best way. Okay, so now let's see your cards. So we have the Fool, New Beginning, that's Uranus. Uranus is in your third house. And then we have Moon in Libra. And then we have Night in Pentacles, Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn. And I'm not looking so much to the astrology for this. I just want to see the tarot frequencies. We have the King of Swords, Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra. We have the High Priestess, beautiful. And then we have the uh, Sword, Ace of Swords. I want to put them all down and then tell you what I think. I already have some ideas of what's going on. Then we have the moon, that's your card. I'm a little zoomed in, but I don't want to touch it because then I'll, you know, here, let's do this. <laughs> okay, so uh, if I touch it, then I might screw up the whole video and have to do a third round. <laughs> no, it's not fun <laughs> to do that because you put your heart and soul into the message and it's like, oh, <laughs> I have to do it again. So we have the Eight of Cups and then we have on the bottom King of Cups. So you're coming up in a very strong position. Whether you're a man or a woman, you have this King of Cups. Somebody that you really liked went in a certain direction because of work. So they, they I don't think, it's not saying whether or not they left your life, but they definitely were on a journey towards their financial goals right and so there's like a lack of definitiveness with regard to that relationship for some of you this may be a relationship uh, somebody that you loved um, that you were in a relationship with but it was amicable it's like this person went to college because that's where they need to be or something like that so there's a separation you guys decided to go your own directions because there was a conflict. There's a fly that flew in. I can't do anything about it. And it has to hang out with us. It's like the cats of, of YouTube. <laughs> you know, they come hang out with the readers. Rouge comes with her fly. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I wish I had a cat. I can't have a cat where I live. So, um, but I'd rather have the sunsets if you guys haven't seen that. So, okay. So we have the Fool, Two of Swords, and the Knight of Pentacles. Am amicable amicable separate separation between two people they might come back together in the future but for now one of them has big goals big financial goals they want to establish themselves and so that's a priority um okay so 
I feel as though somebody is giving you a very powerful message. The person I'm getting that's giving you this message this week is the King of Swords. So that can be a Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra, but that can be anybody. To me, the King of Swords is incredibly wise. This person sees the big picture, and when you receive advice from him, listen, because he's telling you vital information that you need to know that's very important to your circumstances and to your situation. So pay attention to what the King of Swords has to say. Very important for you, very things you need to know. And they have an insight for you that's very, very important that will in some way really empower you they 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 have like an, an insight they're the high priestess like they have they may not be psychic right the high priestess isn't necessarily just about being psychic but they have the inside scoop on something they have an opinion on something and they feel very strongly about it that's what i get so it's something that you need to know that's going to save you money, that's going to save you time, and they're being a true friend to you by saying that, okay? So that's coming through. I have a feeling that um, this, this sun and the moon came up together with the Eight of Cups. I feel like you're going to get a lot of clarity this week on some things that were not clear. And maybe this has to do with Chiron Retrograde on the 15th, where... What I pick up for you, and I don't want to project because, like I said, I know Pisces that are very good with money, but I think majority of Pisces I meet have struggles with money, not in terms of they're not financially okay, but more like on a philosophical level, like materialism is an issue for Pisces. So such things as like, you know, living your life to save money or saving money, all those kinds of things are sort of tough for you guys to do because uh, you're, that's not where your mind goes. So it's always a struggle. And the consequences of that is you've made a lifetime of choices not focused on money. And so many of you, you know, feel that way. Like, like, um, yeah, just, just feel that way. Like that, you know, money's a, a bit of a problem. Um, yeah, <laughs> how do I say it? Yeah, I don't want to project because, like I said, you can be very good with money. But money is not where many of your heads go in general. So that's why you don't focus on it. And so, therefore, you have this sort of, well, you don't focus on you're not good at. If we talk about intuition, you're the best because most of you think about intuitive things most of the time since you're born. So you get it. But here, there's there's this money is just not necessarily <laughs> let's just drop it before i say something that i'll offend people um but i think that whatever has been unclear i think that with the help of other people in your life you're going to become much more clear on this situation in your life and i think maybe this for some of you if you're down because it's this knight of pentacles that's left or you've separated from each other you know, this could be the person that emerges over the six-month period. Remember, this the whole video is called The Partner Emerges. So when we're looking at the conjunction between Venus and Mars, maybe there's a whole, like, love story, journey, and sequence of events that leads to the conjunction in Aquarius on April 2022, or March 2022, sorry. Uh, but anyway, so so... Maybe like everything is happening as it should be. And so as these transits happen over the next six months, maybe uh, you will emerge. Maybe maybe he will emerge. Maybe things will things will work out. Definitely uh, don't have doubt about that. And, and I feel like maybe. Oh, yeah. So I was talking to you about confusion. And so with Chiron direct you might be feeling the pangs of the consequences of the way you think about money. But when it goes retrograde, you feel more confident. And that, that lack of clarity is, any lack of clarity is like cleared up. Do you guys know that like when it's foggy and the sun comes out, it can really like clear the fog? That's what I feel that's happening for you. Like you'll, something that is really getting under your skin or bothering you, you're going to reconcile and walk away from. So like it's you know like you're you're trying to uh, in some way um, address a problem, think something through, and understand it. But the sun coming through clarity and and vision, the North Node in Gemini, 
with Aldebaran allows you to let something go that was like a shadow or a mystery for you. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I got a little bit rambly at the end, so sorry about that. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to make the energy real. I think you're having a nice week, and I think everything's in perfect, perfect, uh, you know, continuum. The, the partner emerging, I think, is a bigger pattern for the next six months. And so I think you're on your way for, for strength. And if you're talking about a relationship, like you're already in a relationship, your partner is going to step up more over the next little while. So whatever starting this week, don't be so focused on the consequences of it yet. Give it some time to grow. And I think it's going to have, you're going to have an outcome that you're going to be happy with. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to make the energy real. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye, guys.